Well, hello everybody, and uh, this is Martin from the British Institute of Professional Photography. Uh, as you can see, I'm not working from the artistry house today. Uh, my wife uh, is actually in school today. Uh, she's a key worker, so I'm looking after the dog. But we'd already scheduled uh, a meeting with Scott. This is another one of our, our, our three favourite things, which I managed to get out this time, Paul Wilkinson, if you're watching. Uh, so I'd like to welcome the amazing photographer and the amazing energy that is Scott. Hi. <laughs> How are we, Scott? Mr. Johnson? I am very good, mate. I, I'm, I'm living the dream at the minute. I'm working from home. Um, uh, people say, how are, you, how are you coping? I'm like, I've been working from home 10 years. This is normal. <laughs> it's just the going out and not photographing I'm struggling with. But I, I'm all right, mate. You know, I'm, 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 I'm okay. How about Are you, you? In your, don't tell a lie, are you in your pyjama bottom still? I'm in my tracky bottom still. Oh, right. Pajamas. Or <laughs> I haven't worn socks thinking, for a week. I was thinking ladies underwear maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> no, it's not, that's a Thursday. It's not till tomorrow. <laughs> so Scott, we're going to talk about your three favourite images that you've ever taken. Uh, just before we do that, I just want you to hold your left elbow up to camera, please. <sighs> so I'm a 40-year-old man that spent time in A&E this week because I fell off my scooter. I was hoping <laughs> you weren't going to bring it up, but it's, it's pretty grim. As if I wasn't going to bring up. You've had me in stitches telling me that you're out with your daughter and you fell off a scooter. Oh, I didn't fall off a scooter. What I was doing, I was trying to avoid a dog that was going to come into my path. So I swerved to avoid the dog. What I didn't see was the rock on the pavement. Um, I was doing about <laughs> 10 miles an hour. So I put my left foot out to try and stop the wobble of the scooter. But what that did, it just projected me forwards over the handlebars and landing on my elbow. And I've taken all the skin off and I've now got like a, a nasty uh, gauze on it to try and encourage the skin growth to come back because they can't stitch it because there's nothing there to stitch. Let, let me check this year, Scott. It, it was your 40th, not your fourth birthday. Just want to make sure that was uh, the correct date. Uh, that, that's, that's correct, sir. Yes, <laughs> the, the, the doctors in A&E found it highly amusing uh, when they asked how I did it. They expected me to say, oh, I was gardening this, that. I was like, no, I've, I've, I've fallen off my scooter. And <laughs> they just walked and that was it, off to get the, off to get the treatment. But um, yeah, I was very brave, but I haven't got my Brave Boy sticker on yet. Did you have your, you have your Brave Boy, your Big Boy uh, undies on there? That's the, the pants, Big Boy pants on. Always, always <laughs> fresh drawers, mate. You never know when you're going to, you know, you never know. I like <laughs> Right then, let's get to it. Looking forward to this, Scott. Looking forward to your three favourite images that you've ever taken. They don't have to be commercial shoots. They can be anything that you want was the, uh, was the brief I gave you. Yep. So let's see what you've got for us. So I've got a mixture. Um, I've always called myself, you know, people see me, I shoot weddings professionally. Um, you know, I've been shooting weddings professionally for nearly 14 years. Um, but I've always thought myself as a photographer that shoots weddings. So I don't specifically, you know, weddings is what makes the, the money. It's what, uh, you know, drives the business forwards. But I, I have a camera everywhere and I just enjoy taking pictures. I've, pick, I've picked a wedding image, uh, a landscape image, and then an other image, which I love. So I'm just going to um, share my screen and then we are you going to do... You were just going to there behind you, by the way, Scott. I have won a couple of trophies. It was, I saw um, Jerry Gionis and Rocco Ancora's video and I saw all their bling. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rearrange the office and put me bling behind me just so people, you know, just because why not? <laughs> well, uh, so, so this image is just a wow image, Scott. And, and I've seen this a lot because of course it made the cover of our uh, magazine, uh, The Photographer, uh, not this quarter, but the quarter before. So I'm very used to it, but such an amazing image. This was, this was a punt. Um, this was uh, a risk that I took on a wedding day. I actually shot at this venue twice. This was the Saturday. I was there on the Friday. Uh, both days it rained and day one it rained a lot. So we couldn't get outside at all. Uh, on this particular wedding, it was raining, but the bride trusted me. And that's the big thing about weddings. You've got to have a lot of trust. So we did some normal pictures um, in and around the venue. And then we had the umbrella up as it just started to, to rain a little heavier. She was you know, bringing it down more across her face. I thought, oh, I quite, I quite like that. So because of the weather, we had a couple of bridesmaids with us. Um, and so I said, can you just pull the veil a little tighter for me? Um, and we brought the, the umbrella down covering her face, which is a brave move, given the, the bride spends you know, the best part of 300 quid getting her hair and makeup done. And I'm there taking a picture where you don't actually see it. Um, so we took this in about 
five minutes, I would think. It's on a Fujifilm um, X-Pro2 with a 56mm lens. Uh, I didn't shoot it at 1.2. I wanted to get, a, I didn't want to blur it out. I wanted to make sure all of the um, umbrella and the dress and the veil was in focus. But it's actually a composite. So what I've done is all in camera apart from the bottom right hand veil. So I had to flip it over because it was the wind was coming from, as you look at the image from right to left. So no matter how tight we were pulling that veil down, it just wasn't sitting how I wanted it to sit. Yeah. So I composited the veil across, um, which is why when it went into WPPI, I had to go into the, um, into the uh, composite category, not the wedding day. So I entered it into the uh, wedding day uh, category. But because I'd manipulated it enough, uh, Luke Edmondson, who was the chair at the time, emailed me and said, because it's been composite, we can't enter it. So it, it, got, it got moved. Um, it's just probably what one of the images that I've taken on a wedding day. And straight out of camera, I kind of thought, I think I might have something here. Yeah. And it was just, I was getting chills just looking at it. But it's, it's probably my favorite wedding picture I've ever taken. It's very, it's become very iconic now. And, you know, everybody recognizes you through this. And uh, I'm going to talk about comps and set, but what, what, did you, what did you score at WPPI with it? You scored heavily. Uh, it scored Set WPP with it as well, didn't you? Yeah, at SWPP, it scored 94. Um, FWPP, a couple of judges were up in the 96 and 97s. Um, and at WPPI, it was my first year entering, uh, and it scored 91 and got me a gold distinction, a uh, gold, um, there. Uh, and yeah, it was one, of, I think it's one of those images that it's a one in a five year. I mean, I, I, everyone tries to chase that, that image, um, that one image that's going to, you know, to find them and stuff and this is ironically the year that i stopped photographing for awards and my creativity was flowing more because i wasn't thinking about it it was yeah. it, something just happened in front of me and i just ran with it i wasn't going out to shoot this this was just chance it was raining chance we had the umbrella chance that the, the sky was gray behind and I, and I just went with it i just want to mention as well that i know you uh, entered it into the nationals with us and um I know it didn't score as highly as you would have wanted to, but I think it's important to point out as well. I mean, scoring 90s at SWPP and, and in the 90s at WPPI is, is, is incredible. But for, for people entering competitions, and I think we touched, chatted about this um, uh, later on about it, that the, the problem we had is that it had been so widely seen. And one of the big things that people mark, uh, the judges mark on is impact. And they'd all seen it. And the thing is, it'd been on our front of our magazine. Uh, so I think that's worth, if people are shooting for competitions, that, and, and I've had this uh, conversation with a few photographers, they have to be careful how, you know, they, they've got to get the most out of it, obviously, from, from a PR and marketing point of view, but also consider, you know, if you're going for a high score, if it's been seen by the judges before, they're, they're not going to market as highly, are they? It's that initial, well, that, as you know, as a judge yourself, if, if you've seen images before, it just loses that little bit of impact. and It does. Get scores and it, it, it's, it's really a case of when an image comes up in front of me, if I'm judging, if I'm thinking, holy wow, this is incredible, then yeah. straight away I'm, I'm up in the scores. But if I'm like, yeah, I've seen it before. And like you say, I'll enter this into the Southeast Awards. It, no, it won. So yeah. it put through to the Nationals. And by then... The image, the image was 18 months old. As you said, it's been on the front cover. It was on the cover banner at WPPI. Yeah. Um, SWPP ran it. Um, so it's, the impact was all gone. So to be honest, although I was upset, not upset, but, you know, a little bit kind of, nah, you know, it's not going to win. I didn't, I wasn't that upset because the impact I knew had been lost from the image. So uh, it was, you know, it, it would love, be loved to have win, but. The, the right image one, I believe. But the mileage you got out of this single image in from PR and from competitions and uh, as I say, to hit the front of our magazine, it's it, it's a special, special image, isn't it? Well, it was almost it, it, it was almost not going to win um, because I entered it into FWPP where it scored ninety four um, and it came second to an amazing shot by Ryan Shembury. I, um, that, yeah. I was gutted because i thought this should have won i you know I, much as i love ryan's work and the image was incredible i kind of thought this is the winner this is going to win and it came second and i was just like i was you asked my missus i was grumpy for about a week I remember and then Becky telling me. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was in the finals for the guild of photographers awards um and it was it had it, it, you know i spoke to the judges afterwards and it had won the wedding image category and overall but then the final round of judging one of the judges had spotted a retouching mark that i had missed yeah so it got discredited because there was an obvious photoshop flaw yeah it was already been sent to wppi yeah. and now i thought to myself 
well, which image did I send? Was it the retouched properly or was it the one with the error? So it'd been judged, the files had been judged. And then Johnson Wee came up to me and said, I need to talk to you about your image and just walked off. I've just thought, oh my God, I've put the wrong one in. I've spotted the mistake. This is my one chance. Um, anyway, it goes on to win. You know, we're all there. Great. And then Johnson came to me and said, why didn't you call it a different title? When you've waited four days to tell me this, why have you left me hanging? <laughs> and, and to be honest, that's something else I would say for people putting in competition. The, the, the title, um, I know that when I was, um, I was almost a tourist in our nationals, sat in the same room helping with the scoring and, um, and watching the judges work. But the title can make kind of a big difference to how people perceive or the subtext that it gives to an image that's being judged as well, can't it? It does. And, that, and we're going to go on to image two now. And image yeah. two was an image that I know that you love. And it's one of the only images that I have titled because I thought it brought something to the image. So that's invaders. Um, I bet it is before you move it forward. Is it? It is. It's a hundred percent. It is a hundred percent space invaders purely because it was an image. Um, so this is number two for me. This was an image that I took on in Las Vegas um, I was very, very jet lagged. It was day number one on my first time at WPPI. Um, and I had just had launched for Fujifilm the X-H1 camera. So I had a pre-production model of the camera. Yeah. Um, and I was just walking in the morning. And as you know, the sun rises above the airport. Um, and I saw this and I thought, this is quite cool. So I took the picture and thought nothing of it. And it wasn't until I got into post-production and I'm a big fan of, you know, if a building should be straight it should be straight the vertical should be vertical and the horizon should be horizontal yeah. uh, so once i pulled it all out and corrected the ratio i thought now do i crop in and do i leave the red things at the uh, turrets at the bottom out yeah. but i thought actually you know what this is quite cool yeah. so i called it space invaders because the red turrets look like the guns that shoot up and where some yeah. curtains are open and some are closed yeah. it looks like the aliens are shooting down trying to get you and i just the more i looked at it i just kind of thought that's really cool. And what I like about images is I was really hoping there was a couple of people making their coffee, looking out at the strip, and I wanted to see some people in the windows. But you look in there and you wonder, are they asleep? Are they at breakfast? Are they still gambling? And it just leads you into thought about this image. I like this image so much. I actually, uh, me and Dev Stanbury, uh, when we were at WPI, not this year, last, last year, uh, we went and tried to search where you'd shot this from, and we still couldn't work out how you'd done it because it's the 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 um, the aspect that you, you you're almost so close to it, but you've got a kind of a higher perspective. But you did say that it kind of took some straightening. But I absolutely love this image. It's, it's and when you see it printed as well, when you actually see it printed in the mount, it's a, such an interesting interesting image. And Sean Connery well, because it was so uh, parallels and the. No, I, I, yeah, Sean's, as we know, Sean's a you know, fantastic architectural photographer. And I think, you know, much like him, you know, buildings need to be, need to be straight. So I took it on a, a 35 mil lens, which is a 50 mil equivalent. So I was um, in the middle of the strip. Um, and because it was so bright and that building is so white, I was down at F8. So it is razor sharp as well. Yeah. So that yeah. obviously sharpness is a massive, massive thing. Um, and... You know, this is one of my favourite images I've taken. You know, it's it's not weddings, but as I said, I'm a photographer that shoots weddings, and yeah. I I adore this. And you know, it's my my own work, but I still get a yeah. massive well, joy of looking at this image. Yeah, and it's one of my favourite images that that I've seen of yours as well. It's just some there's something about it. And as I say, standing where you stood to shoot this. In my head, I still don't know how you did it, but it's it is fantastic. It really is. Well, it's quite funny because you you and Dave Stanbury tried to do it. Gervais tried to do it, and he was yeah. take, t sending me pictures of selfies, and <laughs> you know, it's just it's just something that I saw it and liked it, and um, it, it's always as much as like the previous image with, with the umbrella. You know, people will always try and replicate something that's already won. And I think it's very, very important to try and find your own approach on something. Don't just copy something that's been successful. Yeah. Go and do something because the amount of images that I saw this year that had umbrellas in was yeah. was amazing. Um, so my advice to anyone is don't copy because you're only going to be as, as good as last year or the year before. Just try and be original, try and be different. And it's also really interesting, Scott, that the first two images, I'm not going to say are taken by accident, but they kind of... Uh, they weren't planned, planned, were they? You kind of you saw something at the time. What you didn't go out to do the brolly shot and 
certainly mm -hmm. just kind of with that camera you didn't know until after you looked in the back after to, and, and saw that there's something special in that as well so that's exactly that. right and it, it's just the way my brain's trained and i don't know I, I can't walk past anywhere that's got good light and i think oh i wish i was i had a bride i wish i had a, a proper camera rather than my phone because yeah. i'm just i'm looking for different things this way my brain's wired i suppose yeah. um and it's the best things often happen when you don't look for it and you know i think people try too hard to try and look for that killer image just let your creativity just flow and go with a moment and just go with things and you know when you stop looking that's when you'll find something most magical yeah brilliant so image number three scott Image number three, and again, this was a, a test shot, and I, I actually called it test shot um, oh, in the I know, competition. But I know it, is this the landscape with a tree? See, I know your work. Yeah. That's, uh... yeah. So this, this I actually called test shot. Um, this, Love this image. I am a massive fan of cinema, and I know yeah. everyone is inspired by cinematography in movies. Yeah. And when I first saw this location in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, back in 1991, um, is that? Brian Adams song number one still I think it probably is um it's it's something I've always thought I want to photograph here I really want to take a picture here so this is up on Hadrian's Wall um in a place called Once Brood which is just off the A69 oh, I think that goes between Carlisle and Newcastle 66. and the, six, sorry 66 I think it is but 66 oh, apologies 66, yeah and um this was a test shot because I, I, my, I've got other pictures here with a bride and groom that are walking yeah. across the wall. Yeah. And initially I wanted them to be at the top of the hill on the, the, the second, on the third towards the left and keep the tree on the third towards the right. But this is taken with a 63 mil lens, so a 50 mil equivalent on the GFX system. So I'm a long way away. I'm probably a quarter mile away from where this tree is. Yeah. Um, and I thought that there's no way with post-production I can get this couple looking big enough. So we went a lot closer and the finish shot was taken with a 23 mil lens really close to where the tree is. But this was two shots. This was two images on the side of the road and I called it test shot to see what it was like. Um, and I know a lot of landscape photographers with, with this image purely because, as we both know, landscape is discipline. You have to be up in the morning, late at night, waiting for that one killer image. Yeah. I literally drove past, parked up on the grass verge, got the camera out, took two shots and drove off. Um, and this was the finished result. But this has obviously been post-produced. Um, we put a grad filter at the top because, you know, it's, we wanted to try and not let the sky be too bright at the image and again i chose this on purpose because it's not a regular crop you see at this location this the standard crop is tree in the middle but bish bash bosh done but i wanted the line on the left to kind of follow the, the line of the crest in to find the tree and it you know the it's it's, it's called sycamore gap it's world famous location on hadrian's wall but i wanted it to be done a bit differently i absolutely love it I love landscape photography anyway, but it's a stunning, stunning picture. And I have actually, I do remember the the bride and groom shot as well with with it, and which is another fantastic shot. It's kind of a silhouette shot, isn't it? I, I seem to remember. It is again. That was um, I, I wanted to do a silhouette. I wanted to do off camera flash. My original concept was to go and shoot it at night. Um, this was October, um, and I wanted to shoot it at night and get the Milky Way behind it uh, but obviously it was cloudy the most annoying thing is we had a solar storm that evening so if it was clear we would have seen the northern lights at this location um but it was just it was too cloudy and we missed it so i was grumpy about that because i had everything in my favor i had the location i had the, the bride and groom i had the solar storm was happening it was just cloudy and you know that's you know it's very easy to try and get a, a try and plan a shoot but you need everything to go in your favor so it didn't work so what i had in mind didn't work but we just i just adapted the conditions that i did have and we just we just made something work and made it a bit different and this is my one of my favorite landscapes i've ever taken well again we talked about it before that there's three images there that they're they uh, almost accidental not accidental but uh you're not what you expected to shoot and uh, three incredible images thanks for that scott brilliant no you're welcome so we, we also asked you to uh, find an image that's inspired you, that's made you pick up the camera, that's made you uh, actually want to take pictures. Uh, it didn't have to be, some, some photographers have shown the, uh, an image that they've taken, but I think you've got somebody else's image that you, you're gonna show us. 
I have, I have. This is an image that resonates with me. Um, I, as you know, I'm a big fan of letting your, you know, letting your image do the talking and losing yourself within the image. And, you know, if you can stop, if an image, you can, you can walk past and you stop and you go back to it and you just stare at it, that is an image I want to be taken. So this is an image um, that was taken on Apollo 11. Yeah, and this is taken by Michael Collins. Um, it's just after Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong have left the moon and are going to rejoin the uh, the ship that Michael Collins is on to go back to planet Earth and go back to the Earth. And what I adore about this image is every living being on the planet is in this image, apart from one person, yeah. Michael Collins, the guy that took the picture. Yeah. And you think about it, it gives perspective that we are only this small blue dot hurtling through space at a bazillion miles an hour. And it's so off, it's so easy to forget that, you know, that we are not, it's not about one person. It's about a, a joint, a joint effort, which has kind of brought me back into, you know, where we are in a minute with, with this lockdown. So yeah. it's about perception and the fact that you can stop and you think, Oh yeah, every single living organism is in this picture apart from one person and you got to stop and think back in 1969 the world's population was i think four billion people and that's you know that it makes me stop it makes me think you think about the time in which it was taken in the 60s you know there was more technology in this spacecraft uh, there's more in my phone that was in this spacecraft and you think what it took people to get there and the sacrifices and the apollo one fire and this that everything that took people yeah. to get there and we often forget that all we are is one race and um, that that's that's where we live that's home and everything we know and love is on that planet we've got to do our absolute very best to look after it and i i adore space i've got a book um which i have here that's got nearly every picture taken on all the apollo missions that went around the moon it was a choice between this image or the one that jim lovell took of the earth the first time of earth rise with yeah, um behind yeah. the moon yeah. um it was one of these two but i went for this one purely because the message that it takes that, you know, we are all on this little dot and we've got to look after it as best as we can. Well, I know Jonathan will be, a, will appreciate this picture. He's a, I don't know if you know Jonathan well, but he's a massive, massive uh, Gemini and Apollo fan. And uh, he actually did some stop uh, animation uh, around the, we, we just recently had the, was it 11 or the 13 uh, anniversary? And uh, if you... Uh, 13 was a recent one, yeah. Yeah. So, so if you went on his... Um, on his website or it might be on his Instagram actually he's done this amazing uh, stop animation thing that's just incredible brilliant that's fantastic uh, Scott absolutely fantastic love the pictures love your it's images and, uh, it, that is an inspirational image as well so just before we, we kind of wrap it up uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about one and for people who don't know uh, Scott you're gonna be very soon taking over as our head of qualifications uh, for the British Institute of Professional Photography which is uh, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon that you've uh, agreed to do it uh, with us and uh, for those who don't know you're a very experienced judge you've you judge overseas you judge at WPPI you've done a lot of judging in the UK and, and including at one point being on the board uh, with, uh, with with us at uh, many, many years ago now probably seven eight nine ten it was yeah it was uh, four years ago now I came on the oh, board right okay so it's all a little while ago so you you kind of agreed and, and uh, we've kind of talked around it really but we're not in any detail but we will be doing over the next few weeks as we get close to the end of the lockdown but uh i just wanted to hear a little bit about your vision and for the members about what we're going to do with qualifications moving forward i think as a as a, an association um and as an institute we need to be progressive i think we need to be progressive and respect what's gone but also be respectful about what's coming. Um, we have to be stand true to the traditions that we up, are upholding in regards to the, the three levels, licentiate, associate, and fellowship. But also we have to be more inclusive of every genre of photography. And just because an inch and a half a cuff isn't showing doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, we have to be, you know, a bit more open to styles, a bit more open to um, people that just normally think, oh, you know what? I've looked at the work that's coming through there. My work will never get qualified. You know what? We're going to respect photography and we're going to be, be respectful of the rules, but be also be updating the rules. We're going to be looking moving forwards and there are such an amazing group of photographers that believe that their work is not worthy of qualification. We're going to change that because we want to include everyone, not just the way it's always done. We're going to be respectful of what's passed, but also we're going to move it forward to be progressive. 
Yeah, no, it's uh, really excited to work with you on on on, on the project and uh, and uh, you know, our hats off to at the moment Eric Jenkins who's done an amazing job and and without him the qualifications we couldn't have rebuilt as we've done over the last few uh, well, last ten months. Uh, and and also I think I told you before that we're also going to add some new um, new uh, categories in there. Um, one being drone photography and also econ photography because there's there's a huge amount of uh, econ photographers out there now which would have been classed as commercial at one time but as people know me uh, now I've got a younger brother who's the head of photography at Boohoo and I say photographers working for none of them are a member of any association none of them qualified with any association and there's a lot of different companies out there that we want to bring in and, and be inclusive as well in our, in our association. We have to adapt. We, we, we have to, you know, be progressive and adapt because those that don't adapt just end up dead in the water. Um, you know, our, our good friend Sanjay, you know, says adapt, uh, adapt or evaporate. And, you know, we have to, as an, as an institute, we have to move it forwards and, and, and adapt to the changes of, of society, adapt to the changes of style. Style's a massive thing. And just because something is deemed to be you know not traditional doesn't mean it's wrong we need to include that we need to include every style of photography weddings commercial portrait drone because that is what is driving the industry at the minute it's it yeah. shouldn't be for us to tell what's right and wrong we should we should include everybody that wants to be a part of the institute you're yeah. welcome let's have a little look at your work and let's get the recognition that you deserve for your amazing work brilliant so last question uh and we'll keep it quite brief um Obviously, we're now, I think, is it week four or week five of lockdown? I'm not quite sure. Four. Oh. Oh, oh, my God. Um, so, obviously, this is pre-recorded, but um, one of the questions I always ask is, what are you doing to keep safe, sane? Uh, what do you think, and what, what advice would you give to our members to prepare for, for when this is all over? Don't go out on scooters. <laughs> Definitely don't go out on scooters. Um, I, <laughs> don't do that. Um, I just think you need to uh, be prepared um i'm i'm spending a lot of time now on marketing and getting my uh promotional material up to date websites being updated we are going to be here long after this virus and the minute we stop and think the world's going to finish is a day you might as well give up you know i'm still taking inquiries i'm taking bookings for 2021 2022 because we are still working hard um but don't don't think you have to be up here from nine till six and doing full time hours. We're not full time at the minute. You know, do a nine till three or a ten till four. You know, take advantage of the fact that we're off. Take advantage of the nice weather we've got. Go have a barbecue. Go out and get some fresh air. Spend time with the kids. But don't take your eye too much off the ball with your business because if you do that, you're going to be. You know, we need to hit the ground running when we come out of this lockdown. So my advice would be just enjoy it spend some time with a family but then invest some more time in the business and get the marketing tip top when we come out the other side that's good advice and i, and I want to just finish by uh the tip of the hat to to you as well i know you've been involved with the honest photographer which is a is another helpful website which i think is uh you know we we put a lot of content out there and and, and but what james and yourself and everybody involved with that stuns been really really good as well and makes me laugh so much the uh, <laughs> james actually um sent me over the, uh, the, the the video of him showing the camera, camera settings and we posted it in our oh. community and it's just the funniest thing that I've seen. Um, he, he's a genius. It's just what we're trying to do is give people um, to let them know that they're not alone. Uh, there's a lot of us that are struggling. A lot of us that are very worried um, at the minute. And it's just a bit of light relief, but also giving good song, uh, good content and good value. We've got some amazing people coming on. We've had Kelly Brown. We've got Sarah Ferreira. Yeah. We've, um, you know, doing their favorite 10. We've got Jen Rosenbaum that's just done uh, a, a video interview about her cancer struggle and she survived breast cancer. So it's just about going through hope and giving people a little bit of a glimmer of, of there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's not going to be forever. And if we can have a little bit of fun and make some masks or shoot some Lego, then so what? Let's have some fun and have a laugh. Oh, that's brilliant. Scott, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thank you for everything you do for us, the association and uh, the photography in general. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other soon for, for a beer. I'm excited for the future, mate. Thanks for having me involved. Um, and I'm really, really hopeful and excited that when we come through this, it's, this is going to be the best institute of professional photography ever. Thanks, mate.